In this video, we're going to have a go at removing these manifolds here um, and getting them sandblasted and then painting them. Now, I came here armed with an impact wrench induction torch to undo those rusted nuts, but in actual fact, so far, every single one of them has come undone, which is <laughs> almost a miracle. Well, we've got all of these out, apart from these last ones here, where we've moved to the fluted Minotaur sockets that basically bite into the nut. Let's have a look at that nut when it comes out. Well, in actual fact, the whole stud has come out. Amazingly enough, this last little nut we've managed to get with it. Whoops, that wobble bit there. Wow, well, that's what came out of there. I'm not 100% sure that that is a standard fitting in there. Remember when you take this off that this last bolt here has a bracket on it as well. That last bolt out, in theory, this should just come off. And it does. And that there is the cylinders. Plenty of carbon build up in there, which is not unusual for one of these cars. There should be all of these little rings as well, or seals, mustn't forget to take those off. I'm not an expert on exhausts, and I don't know if it matters which way round these come off, but this bulbous bit is pointing upwards, like that. How usual it is for these studs to be coming out, but that's certainly the case with this car. Many of these studs are coming out rather than the nuts coming off. Before you can get this out, you have to take the oil dipstick off, and that is an Allen bolt, and it's important that you make sure that it's clean in there so you don't run the risk of stripping anything out. Of course, it's inevitable that you'll drop that bolt under the car when you try and do that. There we go. So there we have it. I don't know if somebody's tried to paint this in the past. Um, we'll either use the Eastwood exhaust paint on here or maybe we'll talk to the powder coaters, see if there's another coating that we can use. Uh, as I said, I'm not an expert on exhausts, I haven't painted one before, but certainly this will look a darn sight better once we sandblast it and get all that rust off. And when we were taking those exhaust manifolds off, four of these studs came out, we're just going to clean them up with a wire wheel. One of the fittings was actually a bolt and not a stud, so we've ordered a new one from Mercedes, and you can see that whilst it's the same length, the bit that actually goes into the engine block, the bit that sticks out is shorter, and I suspect it's because on these ones here, the nuts go all the way to the end, whereas as the ones that are in there, you have this bit sticking out the end, which is obviously the rustiest. It's quite tricky winding these studs back in. The way to do it is just to put two nuts on there so they lock together. And then in this particular case, I'm using a ratchet spanner with a kind of flexible end, and that works pretty well to wind this in. While we're here, we might as well whip off this coolant pipe here and also this Y-shaped pipe down here. Send them off to the powder coaters and get them looking like new. When you take this bracket here off, just remember that the pipe bracket goes closest to the manifold and the bracket that holds the oil dipstick on is on the outside. So that bracket there is on the outside. You take, before you take these pipes off, just make a note of things like this. If there's anything cable tied to the bracket so you can remember to put it back where it came from. Yeah, I should probably have checked that there wasn't any water left in this radiator. I just assumed they would have drained all the fluids, but there you go. And um, we'll probably be replacing these rubber hoses. I think most of them are still available and possibly um, either get that radiator record and definitely flushed out, possibly renewed. We'll see what it's like when we get to that stage of the car. 
Now we've had these exhaust manifolds sandblasted at the powder coaters and they made a small schoolboy error. I've never quite understood why they wrap them up with cellophane like this when we get these parts back from the sandblasters. Normally they're powder coated. This is the first time we've just had something sandblasted. And the reason is that the minute you take off that polythene, of course, everything will start to, to rust again. So this has just been sitting in my bedroom for the last few days. You can see that it's already started to rust. So what we're going to do is unwrap this and paint it with the Eastwood exhaust paint. This is the paint that we used on the uh, Red Dragon, the 280SL that was stolen and came out really nice on that exhaust. So I'm hoping the paint will still be good after over a year. One of the radiator pipes came back absolutely fine. It's a bit rough on those edges, but that's no problem. The other one, unfortunately, once they sandblasted it, you can see there that there are these little pinholes. Now, if you're on a budget, all you do is you just cut the pipe here and either use a longer bit of hose pipe or you would join a piece of copper pipe. So the way I'm going to repair the pinholes in this pipe here is by gluing on a patch using the 3M panel bond that we use to repair the air filter. Now, obviously, if you had a welder, you could just weld up at those holes. But once again, the thing about the panel bond is it'll give you a watertight weatherproof seal and that panel bond will actually squeeze itself into those holes and stop the pipe rusting from inside out in the future. Now this panel bond is expensive. You can pay 40 pounds for a tube like this. Just before you're about to run out or when you think you've run out and there's no use left for this, keep it. The next time you've got a small job, just use what's left in there just to fill up that tube, then put it on a fuller tube and then you can use a fresh panel bond to squeeze that out. Just before we can glue that patch on, we're just gonna sand off all the primer undercoat because we're gluing bare metal to bare metal. When you're using panel bond, it's always a good idea to do other jobs at the same time so you don't waste the glue in the nozzle. And when you buy a new panel, this is a re new rear boot panel for the SL, um, it comes with these two big holes and you have to actually buy these sections separately here. So we are just going to panel bond these in um, like so. Today, and this panel bond will be dry, but it just remains to be seen whether we have bonded on those hose clips. Amazingly enough, after undoing the screws, both of those hose clips came loose. So we'll just give this a light sanding just to tidy up this excess glue and then this will go back to the powder coat as they'll reprime this section here and that repair patch sits underneath the pipe so you'll never see it. Now this little section up here it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but um it will be covered by a pipe that comes down to here so there won't be any leaks it's not something you'll see and unfortunately this pipe is no longer available it's next day and the powder coaters have powder coated this in super quick time that's the patch there that we put on with the 3m panel bond and once that's on the car like that that will look as good as new and you will never see that that pipe has been repaired. Now, as I mentioned, this pipe is not available anymore and ideally you would make up a new one if you had the pipe reaming tool there, but I think that's gonna be absolutely fine because the rubber pipe goes quite a way down on here. As I've mentioned before, and I'm sure I'll mention again, when you put a new part on the car or a part that you've just um, refurbished, everything else by comparison will look rubbish. So we will be taking all these brackets home here and cleaning them up to the best of our ability. It's not our intention to do a full nut and bolt restoration on this car, but once you start, sometimes it's <laughs> difficult to stop. Just about to start refurbishing this and thought, my goodness me, the threads are really knackered on this bolt here. But in actual fact, this looks like it's been helicoiled. So we'll probably have to re-helicoil the block to get that to fit in. <laughs> it's never ending with this car. Just make a note of how this bracket attaches here. To get it off, you have to slide it off that way. And then very carefully snip those without snipping the wires. We've got all the pipes nicely powder coated now, but I think what I'll do is replace the top hose here 
and also the bottom hose down here at very least because you can see that they are I don't know how well you can see that um, completely rusty and full of rusty water this hose here looks absolutely fine this is the we'll also need a header tank for this car now i could take the one off our parts car but i think i may just go along to euro in america these guys here um and rock auto and actually just buy these pipes new and obviously while we're at it <laughs> get some decent hose clamps maybe some stainless steel ones that don't rust so I'm going to leave this video here. In the next video, I'm going to either take the radiator out, flush the cooling system, or probably put the manifolds back on, repaint the rest of that exhaust, which is new, and see if I can source the correct pipes that lead from the exhaust manifold here down to that exhaust section. So barring any unforeseen circumstances, I am still expecting to get this car running in the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll get the exhaust manifolds on in the next video and then we'll get the radiator system back together we'll probably flush this radiator we'll have to do a complete rebuild on the brakes and probably um, replace that rusty old master cylinder we refurbished the brake booster almost a year ago now but slowly but surely this car is coming together it is a labor of love and horrendously expensive but worth it when you get a sunny day to drive them